This is Real Ghost Stories Online. Firefighters go through a lot, a lot of crazy things, not just from the aspect of fires, but uh, they're the ones that are called out quite frequently with paramedics and things of that nature. So along with a lot of police officers, they also see some of the worst of society in some of their craziest situations. But what about the crazy situation of being in the middle of doing your job, fighting a fire? in the midst of it, and you encounter the dead. In that moment, do you assume it's the living because you're trying to rescue people, get people out? Or do your better instincts kick in and you realize this is not a living person? But how do you know? That's what we hear about in our first story. Take a listen. I am a retired firefighter from a busy department somewhere along the Gulf Coast. The story I'm about to tell you took place about 15 years ago. At that time, I was a lieutenant assigned to an engine company. The shift started out normal enough. We had a variety of calls, fire alarms, car accidents, and EMS runs. Around 2 a.m., we were upstairs to sleep in the bunk room. The house lights kicked on on the speaker and the ceiling squawked to life. Battalion 2, Engine 2, 5 and 7, Ladder 3, Rescue 1, Respond to Box 1277. Box alarm assignment, house fire. I was out of bed and sliding down the pole to the apparatus bay before the dispatcher even finished talking. I threw my gear on and hopped into the cab of the truck. We were the first due engine assigned to the box, which meant that we would be the first on the scene. As we pulled out of the station, I reached for the radio microphone to say that we were en route. Before I could key the mic, dispatch said, Fire alarm to companies responding to box 1277. We have a report of a a child trapped inside the residence. Now, usually when firefighters catch a working fire, Our adrenaline kicks into high gear. When you find out that there are trapped occupants, particularly a child, it hits an even higher gear. The location of the call was only 10 blocks away from the station, so I knew we would be there quickly. As we pulled up in front of the house, I yelled at my two firefighters to go ahead and stretch a line to the front door. My EO, the dump pump operator, got ready to pump when we needed him to. I jumped out of the cab and prepared to do an initial 360 of the residence to note the layout, utility connections, etc. When I got out of the cab, I could see a young couple standing in the front yard. They told me that their four-year-old was still inside. Flames were showing from the front and one side of the house. The house didn't have a fence, so I ran around the backyard to not only do my usual 360 but also to see about access from the rear of the house so we could go in and try to find the child. The back door was open. Thick smoke was rolling out of the door down around the foot of the ground, and I realized that the survivability factor for someone inside with no protective clothing was pretty much non-existent. We had to try. It was when I looked over my shoulder... Standing about 15 feet away in the middle of the backyard was a child dressed in pajamas. I scooped the kid up and my arms ran back around the front yard where the parents were. I passed the kid off and told them to go ahead and go across the street so that they would be out of the way. They began to profusely thank me for rescuing their child as already headed back to the rear of the house to make an attack on the fire. So I didn't have time to tell them that I found the child in the yard. 
Once the fire was out, I was curious as to how the child had made it out of the house, given that he had no burns on him and no soot under his nose to indicate he had breathed in any smoke. The parents and child were in the driveway across the street, so I headed over to them and to talk. As I approached, the mother again began to thank me, but I told her that I had found the child in the yard. The mother said that when they woke up and realized there was a fire, the location that it was burning prevented them from getting to the child's room. Having been inside and seen the fire and the aftermath, I could tell that she was telling the truth. However, not only was the fire blocking the parents' access to the child, but it was also in between the child's room and the back door. Not to mention the front door. This would probably make more sense if I could draw a map of the house, but anyway, there was no way that the child should have been able to reach the back door. At this point, the father looked at the child and asked, How did you get out of this house? The child immediately said, Grandpa carried me. Looking at the mother, I asked, It's just y'all that live here, right? And mother said yes and continued on to say that both her father and her husband's father were dead and had died before the child was born. I then asked the child for a description of the person that carried him out of the house. The child gave a very detailed, especially for a four-year-old who had just been in a fire description of a man. As the child was talking, I glanced over at the mother's face. Despite being the middle of the night, I could see that she had gone deathly pale. She kind of waved on her feet and both her and her husband, and I reached over to steady her. Her voice was barely above a whisper when she said, That's my father. He just described my father. The husband elaborated and said that when they found out they were going to have a baby, they set out on a three-hour drive to tell her parents that they were going to be grandparents. They were on their way. The wife's father died of a massive heart attack and never found out that he was going to have a grandchild. But I guess he found out anyway, because he was there to save the life of his grandson. Weird things happen in fires sometimes, things that we cannot explain, or at least explain to everyone's satisfaction. In this case, we have the dead taking care of the living. stories online want a commercial free experience of the show with access to the world's largest audio archive of ghost stories sign up at apple podcast right now and try it for three days free ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash real ghost stories